today I'm going to be uh, testing this uh, Radeon HD 6950. Uh, it's sort of a few generations old now. It came out uh, in about 2011 or 2010. Uh, it's a VTX uh, edition card which is awful as you can see. There's two heat pipes, um, <laughs> but the cooler can clearly have four in it. You can see the two heat pipes there, and the two holes you can see through there and there, and they should go through there and there. Uh, these heat pipes are on the uh, 6970 version, but not the 6950. You can see the dual heat pipes there. You can see the lack of the other two. Uh, it's got a red PCB, which is awful. Uh, two crossfire fingers. Uh, it has two six pin power connectors. And the rear I.O. features two mini display ports, a HDMI out, and two DVI outs. Uh, I'll be running this with the display ports and hopefully running 4K on it, which would be quite funny. A few 4K benchmarks in uh, Unigen heaven. Um, the construction of the card is uh, terrible, really. The PCB is exceptionally easy to bend, as you can see there. Um, <laughs> it's got no backplate or anything, and the PCB well, it seems to be decently thick. Um, I'm not sure how... Well, it's got no plates or bracing on it or anything. It's a fairly light card. The plastic shroud is also fairly flimsy and cheap, as you can see. Um, the fans on it look feel like fairly cheap fans, although they're both nice and smooth. Uh, anyway, so... Other than that, it's a dual slot card, pretty cheap feeling, probably quite cheap when it was new. Dual heat pipes, we'll see how it performs at 1440p, 1080p, 4K, pretty much everything really, and this sticker here is peeling off, but it doesn't really matter. I think this card cost me £30, not too bad. Let's see if it can... Uh, be on par with a GTX 480 is what I'm putting it up against. This is a, uh, a two gigabyte model, I think. Yep, it is indeed two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. There you go. So that's it for now. I'll come back with some testing results. Right then, as you can see, we have the card in the system now. It's on as well. We've got uh, Unigen uh, Valley Benchmark open here. We're going to run all the way through from uh, the basic preset right up to 4K maxed out. So we're going to go Extreme HD next, which is uh, that one there, DX11. And then we're going to use the same settings as the uh, Extreme HD Benchmark. But we're just going to change the resolution to 1440 uh, and then 4K. As you can see, I'm running a uh, 4K monitor here. I've got a MSI Afterburner up here. There you go. Stock speed uh, is 800 megahertz on the GPU, 1250 on the memory, 1100 millivolts on the core. The power limit can go up and down. Got GPU Z open as well, which agrees. You can't read the ASIC quality on these cards, unfortunately. It's a 40 nanometer card. This card, unfortunately, has uh, Hynex RAM, so I'm not entirely sure how good that's going to be. Um, I've got all my uh, monitors open here in Afterburner, all the way down there. I will be running the fans at 100% uh, to keep the graphics card as cool as possible. You can see it's been up to 
47 degrees. It's hovering around 36, 35 at the minute. So I'm going to run basics, show you the results, then keep up in the resolution. Um, and then I'll overclock the card, see what I can get out of it and do all the tests again. Right, as you can see, I've just finished doing the uh, basic benchmark at 720p. It's managed an average of 77.3 FPS, maximum 145.8, minimum 36.8 and a score of 3,232. So, as you can see, this is on stock speeds at 1080p and it's managed to get 26.6 average FPS, uh, maximum FPS of 47.5, minimum 15.8 with a score of 1113. So then, average FPS 16.2, a maximum of 28.6, Minimum 9.5 and a score of 677 at 1440p. Uh, it's going to be a right slideshow at 4k. I'm quite looking forward to this. It's going to be quite funny. Right then, at 4k it's managed an average FPS of 2.8. Uh, a maximum of 6.1 and a minimum of... 1.7 with a score of 118 which uh, I approve of and uh, you can see what it's like it is very much a slideshow so I've run into a little issue here I'm at 950 on the core and 1350 on the memory which is unfortunately the maximum I can go to in MSI Afterburner um, so at 1080p it scored a average of 30.2 FPS, um, a score of 1265 and you can see the minimum and maximum there. I'm going to go and do 4K, 1440p and the basic preset now, um, all at this speed uh, and then I'm going to have to get a custom BIOS from somewhere to uh, try and get it to go higher. So as you can see here, I've finished the 1440p benchmark. Uh, it's managed 18.6 FPS, a score of 777, a minimum FPS of 10.9 and a maximum of 32.7. That again is a 950 on the core and 1350 on the memory. Right, as you can see, we're at 4K here in slideshow mode again. Uh, this is overclocked again to 950 MHz on the core and 1350 on the memory. Uh, as you can see, it's managed to average 2.8 FPS with a score of 117 which I think is one lower than when it was not overclocked, which is strange. Um, a minimum FPS of 1.6 and a maximum FPS of 6.4. Right then, I'm not sure why, but it fell flat on its face uh, in the um, 720p uh, basic benchmark. Um, as you can see on the graph here, it had quite a few large drops where the driver crashed. So uh, it was getting pretty hot as well. It was getting up to 81 degrees. Um, so I'm going to replace the thermal paste on it probably. But the settings I was running before it crashed looked something like uh, this. I'll just go ahead and uh, redo it again. Obviously with a 100% fan speed, but this was pretty much what I was running those benchmarks at there. If it will focus, there we go. Uh, I'll apply those as well. There we go. When GPU-Z catches up. There you go. So... 
that's about it for now until I can get a custom BIOS and some better cooling on it. So, see ya.